Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing an ANOVA with a Bonferroni correction in SPSS. The Bonferroni correction is often used in statistics to reduce the probability of a type 1 error when testing multiple hypotheses. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS. Let's assume these data originated from a counseling agency and we have a program, independent variable, and it has three levels, REBT, Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, Psychodynamic Therapy, and a waiting list. And our dependent variable is continuous, or scale, as it's referred to in SPSS, and it measures anxiety levels. So as you can see, we have three levels of the independent variable program, Therefore, we have multiple hypotheses. Is REBT statistically significantly different than psychodynamic? Is psychodynamic different than the waiting list? And is REBT different than the waiting list? So there are three hypotheses we're testing. Before we can start with ANOVA, there are a few assumptions we have to meet, including independence of observations, a categorical independent variable with two or more levels, which we have. We have a categorical independent variable with three levels. A dependent variable measured on the interval or ratio level of measurement, and we have that with our anxiety dependent variable. We also have to check for outliers in the dependent variable and normality. As part of the ANOVA procedure in SPSS, we'll conduct a Levine's test to test for homogeneity of variance. So we can test for normality and for outliers using analyze, descriptive statistics, explore, and in the dependent list list box here in the dialog I'm going to move the dependent variable over anxiety and under plots I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf, check off histogram, and also check off normality plots with tests. Click continue, then OK. We can see we have the output here in SPSS. We have no missing cases. We have a Shapiro Wilk p value of 0.241, which is not statistically significant. So we would assume the variable anxiety is normally distributed. And moving down to the box plot, we can see we have no outliers here in this variable. Now in testing normality, on occasion there's a more strict method for testing normality with an ANOVA where you want to test the normality for each level of the independent variable. So if you want to conduct that test, you first have to split the file by the independent variable. So go to data, split file, Organize output by groups, in this case the independent variable. The groups are based on program. And click OK. And notice here that the split file is active. And with the file split, we can conduct the same analysis. And we can do that right here from the output view, Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore, and click OK. So now we have the output divided by each level of the independent variable. So you can see first we have REBT, and Shapiro-Wilk is not statistically significant. So we're going to assume that the scores in anxiety for this level of the independent variable are normally distributed. As we move down to the next level, which would be psychodynamic, we have a non-statistically significant result here as well. And then for waiting list, you see we have a non-statistically significant result here for Shapiro-Wilk. So the scores are normally distributed for each level of the independent variable program. So before moving on to conduct the ANOVA, it's important to take the split file off. So I'll go to split file and analyze all cases. Do not create groups. Click that radio button. Click OK. And you can see at the bottom of the output viewer, you have split file off. So now we can configure the ANOVA. 
It will be analyze, general linear model, univariate. For our dependent variable, it will have anxiety. For the fixed factor or independent variable, we'll have program. We'll make no changes under model or contrast. For plots, I'm going to add uh, one plot here. I'm going to put program on the horizontal axis and click add. So it shows up down here. For post hoc, I'm going to move over program and select Bonferroni. Now I'm going to actually show you two ways to conduct the Bonferroni correction. Uh, both ways will provide the same result. This is one of the ways to select it in the post hoc test. Click continue. Under save, no changes. And under options, I'm going to click descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, homogeneity tests. And then I'm going to move program over to display means for. I want to check off compare main effects and under confidence interval adjustment I'm going to select Bonferroni. So in this case by selecting the Bonferroni correction here and under the post hoc test I'm going to get two tables that other than a little formatting that is different provide the same result. So I'll click continue. Now the analysis is ready to run, so I'll click OK. And you can see we have three levels of the program independent variable, REBT, psychodynamic waiting list, coded as 0, 1, 2. These sample sizes are equal for all three groups, 15. We can see by looking at the means here that REBT had the lowest, then psychodynamic, then waiting list. We want to interpret the Levine's test here to determine if we have homogeneity of variance. We have a non-statistically significant result here. 0.829 is greater than 0 0.005. So we would assume that we have homogeneity of variance in this case. Moving down to tests of between subjects effects. We're most interested here in program. We do have a statistically significant p-value, 0 0.004 is less than 0 0.05. And looking at the partial eta squared, we can see that uh, the value is 0.234, which means 23.4% of the variance in the dependent variable anxiety can be attributed to the independent variable program. So next I'm going to move down to pairwise comparisons. And you can see at the bottom of this table, Adjustment for Multiple Comparisons, Bonferroni. So this table has been adjusted with the Bonferroni correction already. So the way the Bonferroni correction works is it takes the number of levels of the independent variable and it divides the alpha by that value. So in this case, 0 0.005 divided by 3. This reduces the probability of a type 1 error. But the way the output is generated is consistent with the alpha being set at 0 0.05. So the p-values in this case are tripled. And I'll show you how that looks in a few moments. So we can see here we have RABT and psychodynamic. And we do not have a statistically significant difference between those levels. There is a statistically significant difference between REBT and the, and the waiting list, and there is not between psychodynamic and the waiting list, 0.867. If I move down to the post hoc tests, you can see under here dependent variable anxiety, Bonferroni, right? So this is really the same table, it's just the formatting is a little different. So, for example, looking at the mean difference, it's negative 6.73 here. But if I move up to the table, you see there's one more digit available here in this table, pairwise comparisons. And it also displays one more digit for the lower and upper bound of the 95% confidence interval. 
but as far as the p-values you can see they are identical and in the same format meaning three digits to the right of the decimal are displayed and we have the same results here and then at the end here we have the line graph where we see RABT, uh, the values down here for anxiety, psychodynamic, uh, much higher, and then waiting list a bit higher than that. So I'm going to rerun this analysis, but I'm not going to make the Bonferroni correction for pairwise comparisons. So I'm going to go back into the general linear model and over to options. And I'm going to leave compare main effects checked off, but where it says confidence interval adjustment, Bonferroni, I'm going to select LSD, uh, which is no adjustment, none. And just to streamline the output, I'm going to uncheck um, on the other options here under display. And under plots, I'm going to remove the plot then click OK. So as I move down to pairwise comparisons we can see now without the Bonferroni correction we would have drawn a different conclusion about these results, right? So we have REBT psychodynamic, now we do have a statistically significant difference although it didn't change our conclusion for the REBT and the waiting list still statistically significant although at a different value and it didn't change the result from psychodynamic to waiting list. The, the end result, the conclusion, it didn't change the actual p-value though. So I'm going to move this output table down so it's right above the multiple comparisons just so we can see both of these tables on the screen at the same time. So again pairwise comparisons uh, no correction made, no Bonferroni correction made, and then multiple comparisons, post hoc test, we do have the Bonferroni correction applied here. So instead of resetting the alpha by divided by 3, it maintains the alpha at the level we're used to, 0 0.05 in social science is a very common alpha. It leaves it set there and it multiplies the p-value by 3. So it allows us to interpret the results using the 0 0.05 alpha. So you can see here the p-value for RABT and psychodynamic is 0 0.020. However, there are more digits to the right of this. So if I double-click on here, double click on the value you can see that it's rounding this value. We'll just say a 0 0.02 and then looking at the post hoc test we can see the value is 0 0.059. So multiplied by 3 there. 0 0.001 multiplied by 3 they get 0 0.003 and then 0 0.289 multiplied by 3 that's where we get the 0.867. So the conclusion we would draw here, uh, if this data were actual data, would be that there was a statistically significant difference between the RABT scores and the waiting list scores, but no other statistically significant differences are evident in this analysis. I hope you found this video on performing an ANOVA with a Bonferroni correction to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.